Why was Titanic called Titanic? The size and scale of the ship is often credited as the reason behind her name, Titanic. The word means of exceptional strength, size or power. And the ship was designed to reflect all three of those attributes. But the truth behind the name Titanic is deeper than that. So let's explore the history and discover why the world's most famous ship was named Titanic. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Chris Frame, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a maritime history author and lecturer. I speak on board cruise ships and at maritime museums around the world. I'm also the co-host of the Big Cruise podcast. I'll link it in the description below. If you're interested in cruising, cruise ships or maritime history, I think you're going to like it here. So hopefully you'll subscribe at the end of the video. When Titanic entered service in 1912, she was the flagship of the White Star Line. So to understand the origins of the ship's name, we need to start with the company that created her. White Star Line was a brand that had been plying the world's oceans since 1845, initially undertaking sailing ship voyages to Australia. But in 1868, this all changed. White Star had fallen on hard times, so the brand name and the house flag were acquired by the Oceanic Steam Navigation Company under the watchful eye of Thomas Henry Ismay, father of J. Bruce Ismay. Ismay set about re-establishing White Star as a North Atlantic line. The company set about building a fleet of propeller-driven steamships, starting with the revolutionary Oceanic in 1870. Oceanic was joined by three sisters, Atlantic, Baltic and Republic, and it is here that the first hints as to the origins of Titanic's name can be found. Have you spotted it? Look at the end of the names for a hint. The origins of Titanic's name were set down decades before the giant liner was ever dreamt up. As you'd have noticed, the first four White Star liners had names ending in IC. This became an established norm at White Star, with nearly every ship operated by White Star Line carrying a name ending in IC. Today, we are familiar with naming conventions for cruise lines. For example, all of the modern Royal Caribbean ships have an of the sea suffix. Ships of the modern day p and Australia carry a Pacific prefix, while Holland America Line ships past and present all carry a name ending in dam. With 300 cruise ships in service today, familiar names make it easy for travellers to identify which ship belongs to which brand when reading reviews, checking out brochures or watching YouTube videos to decide what cruise to book next. Now rewind to the 1870s and consider a world where the primary form of communication was print and there were hundreds of ships to travel on. The need for easy identification becomes even more essential. Shipping lines of the day relied on printed sailing schedules and black and white newspaper advertisements to inform customers of their voyages. In this setting, a traveler's ability to quickly identify White Star ships was deemed essential. A common naming practice used in conjunction with the distinctive house flag and brand name meant that potential passengers could identify White Star ships by their names. It's basically brand management 101. Keep it simple, consistent and recognizable. This naming convention was a success. And it stuck, even after advertising became more sophisticated. And so, by the time the Titanic was under development, the ship's name was going to end in IC, and this narrowed down the choices for the name of the vessel. The next consideration for White Star when naming Titanic was the significance of the ship, or more precisely, the significance of the class of ships which she belonged to. Titanic was the second in a trio of giant ships which became known as the Olympic class. These ships were designed to eclipse their rivals at Cunard and Norddeutsche Lloyd in size and luxury, and were built at White Star Line's preferred shipbuilder, Harland & Wolff. Now you'll notice that Titanic was part of the Olympic class, not the Titanic class. But why is this? Well, when a variant or class of ships are built, the class is generally named for the first ship in the variant. We still see this today, with the fantasy class of Carnival cruise ships named after the first ship Fantasy, or the huge Oasis class named for the Oasis of the Seas, the first ship of that class. So why Olympic class? Well, the first ship in the trio was named Olympic, and this gives us our second hint into the origins of Titanic's name. White Star had carefully considered the names of their new trio. They were the largest liners of their day, so size was important. But White Star also knew that in time, they would likely be eclipsed in size, so the names had to be something that would draw attention over decades, well after the initial excitement of their maiden seasons. The brand looked to ancient Greek mythology to elevate the status of their new ships. 
in particular, the interconnected story of the Titans, the Olympians and the Giants. Perhaps the most well known of the group were the Olympians, a mythical race of immortal beings worshipped as gods of the Greek pantheon. They were named for their home atop Mount Olympus. As the class leader, Olympic was always intended to be the most famous of the trio, and in fact, until April 15, 1912, she was. She was the first ship to smash the size barrier, the first to introduce the opulent interiors that the trio were known for, and she was the first in the class to set sail for the White Star Line. So it was fitting that Olympic was named after the most famous of the Greek gods, the Olympians. Sticking with this theme, the second ship in the class was also named after ancient Greek mythology. The Titans ruled before the Olympians, thus Olympic's sister was named Titanic, adding IC to the word Titan to ensure she retained the naming convention. Titanic also signified strength and size, as well as power, but this was not the only consideration for the choice of the name. So now we know that Titanic was named after the Titans, following a naming convention that included a name ending in IC, as well as incorporating ancient Greek mythology as established by her sister Olympic. But what of the third ship in the Olympic class? Well, the origins of the name of the third ship is slightly more blurry. It is believed that White Star intended to call the ship gigantic. The giants were a race of great strength who battled with the Olympian gods, so the name Gigantic fits with the theme of ancient Greek mythology. There does exist newspaper reports from the time that talk of plans for White Star's Gigantic. However, tracking down the origins of the ship's name back to official primary sources is more challenging. And there are plenty of other maritime historians who will tell you that the Gigantic name is the stuff of legend. What do you think? Is the Gigantic name fact or fiction? Regardless, the new ship had not been completed when Titanic was lost, and ultimately launched as Britannic, breaking the naming convention of the Olympic class while retaining the icy ending of the White Star Line. So now we know why Titanic was called Titanic. It was not just a nod to her size and strength, but rather a continuation of an elegant naming convention established at the birth of the White Star's transatlantic service. We also know that Titanic was never intended to overshadow Olympic, and though Titanic did add a few extra amenities when compared to her sister, Olympic was well and truly the more famous of the two ships, until Titanic sank. The name Olympic is a great hint as to White Star's pride of the class leader, as the Olympians had defeated the Titans. And it's only really due to the allure of the Titanic story that we've associated her name with an unintended bias towards the second ship in the class. Make no mistake, in an alternate universe where Titanic and Britannic had survived their maiden seasons, White Star would have been immensely proud of all three ships. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and please subscribe for future cruise and maritime history content. Thanks once again for watching and until next time, I hope to see you on board.